All right, so at this point we've completed two AutoCAD activities and the reason I'm doing this video is to help anyone who was having technical difficulty, but I guess this is a great video for anyone doing these parts. So the first part that I want us to complete is this one. What I like to do is put this on a different screen or you can just take a picture of it with your phone and then you can draw your stuff here as you reference the picture. Let's start with a new drawing. Looking at my my drawing, it's in metric. It's in metric units. It's in M. So here I'm going to stick with metric. Okay, and I'm going to call this one 1.5 M gasket to match the object that I'm drawing. We just take an extra couple of seconds. You can make it a little more organized for yourself later. So First off, I'm going to my draw tools um, because I'm going to be drawing this object. And one key thing to remember is that you are working with an XY grid. So what's really helpful is if you start at 0, 0, origin. This software does not work like Microsoft Paint. It's more like a command prompt in a computer where you have to type commands. So whenever we do actions, we're going to have to be very conscious of the different options available for that tool. So to start off, I'm going to make a vertical line. I'm going to start with the height of this object. So here I'm going to use my line tool. I click and now I'm going to specify the first point. So the first point I notice is I'm going to keep it all the way on the left right here. So it's going to, this is going to be on my y-axis so my x coordinate is going to be 0, but my starting point is going to be 10. So here in the software, specify, oh, this is going to be funky. Okay, 0, comma, 10. Boom. Oh, that looks funny. That's because if you look at my units, it's saying that the distance is 1,924. I'm zoomed way too far out. I'm going to zoom in now until it looks like okay there's a gap here so what you'll notice is as I zoom it's going to zoom directly to where I'm pointing so here it's going to zoom all the way out to the right and now I'm zooming at origin because I'm pointing at it great okay the length of this line if I re reference my object I can specify the next point and I see that in my command line so it's telling me that the total height of this object is 60 based on the picture. So I started off 10 units away from the X, the X line. So I'm going to make my next coordinate 60, no, 0, comma 60, because the Y value is 60. What do you mean invalid? Hey, specify next point. 0, 60. Yeah, that's what I thought. All right, so now I've got a nice vertical line. It is the length that I want. To check this, I can use the Annotate tab, click Measure, and when I hover my mouse over it, it's going to tell me that the length is 50. That's what I want. Now I'm going to get my line tool, and we should go faster now, because we're just going to follow the outline. This is a good point to identify that you want to click all of your snaps. I love having snaps. They make it so much easier to work with your drawings. So if your snaps are not on or it's deactivated, it's going to be tougher for you. Okay, so now I got this box. It's an endpoint. So I can click this endpoint and here, rather than me specify the next point, I'm going to do this a little differently. I'm going to use numbers and tabs. So here I notice on my drawing the width is 110. I'm not done. I press tab. Tab is going to change. So now I'm not doing the length. You see how the angle is changing? If I press zero, it will ensure that I have a zero degree line. It is perfectly horizontal. I'm now going to use that line tool and whichever way you want to do it. I'm just going to specify a coordinate. I'm going to use 110 comma 0 because it's 110 millimeters to the right 
and zero commas, uh, zero away from the height. I'm then going to send it back over. Let's say 110 minus 20 is 90. Enter. And here I have a snap point. Beautiful. I just realized I messed up. That's okay, because there's another trick. Control Z. So I press escape to get out of the tool I'm in, then I hold control and press Z. It'll undo some of my actions. Okay, I'm gonna get that line tool. I don't know why I went back that much, but that's fine. Here, my height is 60. And now, here, the angle isn't great for me. So 180 and 30 is my distance. From here, my angle is 90. And I'm just using the tab key to switch between these. And then my length is 20. So now, here, it says my angle is 180. Let's type that just to be sure. And the next distance is, oh, 60 minus 30, 30. Just to show you, you can do this multiple ways, I'm going to now type the coordinates. So for this point, right here, it is 110 minus 60. This width is 50, and it's going to be on my x axis. So it's going to be um, 50 comma 0. So here, I just click there, 50 comma 0. Enter. Almost done. This last portion, I'm going to do, I'm going to do it the same way. Uh, we have, let's see, 50 minus 20 is 30. No, it's going to be 20 comma 0. And now I can just connect to my end point. The beautiful thing about this is it tells me the angle of what it's supposed to be. My drawing doesn't do that. All right, next tool is the circle tool. Here, click circle. Specify center point for circle. So there's two ways that you can approach this. Now, if you're working off of origin, you can just input the, the coordinates for that. But I'm going to show you another trick that I do. Maybe it's jury rigging, but eh, whatever. Here, if I look at my diagram, it says that the height is 20, and I know the width is 20. So what I'm going to do is give myself a center point. You could do this, I guess, with the measurement tool, but I, I just use the rectangle. And here, I'm going to now use, I'm going to type in 20, tab, 20. This is the center point for my circle. So looking at my circle, the center point is here. And the diameter, oh here, 2 times 20. So my diameter is 20 millimeters. So when I type this in, there's going to be something that we got to be cautious of. Type, I press circle, I'm going to select that corner that I identified as being the center. And now I look at the command prompt, specify radius of circle or diameter. I'm going to use the radius. If the diameter is 20, the radius is 10. We're good. Next up, we're going to use the circle tool. And this time I'm going to do it with coordinates. So here, it says the center point is 20 away from the edge. The total length is 110, so 90, comma, 40. And a radius of 10. Great. Because I did my jury rigged method, I now have to click and delete that. Use the delete button or the backspace button. You may need to hold Alt and press backspace if you're on a Chromebook. You don't. Yeah, it's just it's the button, it's the physical button. We now have our object drawn out to scale perfectly. Great. Next thing we need to do is identify layers. So here I'm going to create some layers. Layer 1 is going to be center. And I'm going to change those center lines. Oh, click it. Change the center line to red. That way I can clearly identify that I got red center lines. I'm going to make another layer. I'm going to call this dimensions. Once again, I'm going to give it a very clear yellow color. So I'm going to go back to my center line, click it, and you'll see layer properties. Here we need to change our line type. We need center lines. So click center. Name is center, line type center, line might default. Great. 
Now, at this point, this is where we're going to have some funky because we're dealing with scale. Now, here you can kind of see the hidden, the center lines going on, but it doesn't look great. So, to revise this, we need to play with scale. Click your center line layer and now click properties. Here, it's got your line type scale. Now, dimension style, we'll get to that later, but here, let's see. The smaller this number is, the larger, no, the smaller the lines appear. So I need my lines to appear larger. As a good rule of thumb, set it to the radius. Let's try if I do 10. Now, when I do my center line from top to bottom, here it's actually perfectly matched up with that uh, circle. So I set the scale to match the radius of my circle and now I can draw my center lines on both circles. Okay, done. Great. Next we need dimensions. So let's go to layer dimensions. A dimension line is going to be continuous so we just leave it. But we're going to have to go to properties because you're going to see architectural underscore 125. Look at this monster. When I go to the annotate tab and I click dimension, I get this monstrous looking tick mark. These are architectural tick marks. They don't use arrows. They use those little slashes. And so when we go to our properties window, we can change architectural 125 to, let's go to mechanical Let's go to standard. Just go to standard. See how that performs. So we click dimension and we attempt to dimension it using standard. Looks a bit small. So we're going to undo. Let's change standard to mechanical 10. Mechanical 10. Still too big. Let's go to mechanical 5. Dimension here. Uh, it's better. Let's try mechanical 3.5. I think that's going to be just right. Cool. So now what I can do, I click one point, I click another point, and I move my dimension. I continue this. And as a nice shortcut, if you can remember the shortcuts for dimension, you just, oh, you can just press D. If you type dim, it's the dimension tool. And now I can use it to just... That's wrong. It's always a little funky. Let's just do our heights. So here I'm doing the top, the bottom, the top right there. Here I want to get this. And it's going to allow me to do dimensions until we're finished. Okay, let's do... Here, it's a little funkier. I'm going to hover my mouse, and now i got this green line showing that it's lined up with that width line. I can now drag my dimension downward. Great. And here, boom, boom, bring it down. Okay, last thing I'm going to say, and this is kind of a bonus, because here we've kind of gotten to the point where we're dimensioning. Um, maybe what I'll do... Here, when I click dimension, you see it says diameter 20. That's a good spot to click. I can just drag it out here, and I can drop my dimension of 20. And in fact, let's double, uh, get out of my dimension tool. If I double click this, let's see, text override, let's see, two times. Uh, Nah, that's no good. I don't want to do that. I lied. Let's just leave it at 20. Uh, last bonus thing, I'll be real quick. You're going to use the Modify tool. Select Move. Select this dimension. Move. Okay, I press Enter. And now I'm going to specify Base Point here. And I'm going to change that to here. That just cleans it up so we can have multiple layers and not draw on the object. That's it.